All right. Um, <clears throat> so I thought it would be uh, good to go over these two books that I read over in the summer because um, they're like very related. That a lot of times when you ask people like, um, do you have any advice for books related to career building? They might say like, oh, well, you just learn on the go. But um, at times I think it can also be useful to check what other people have thought about um, and take what you want from it, uh, what's useful to you. Um, so these two books, so, uh, Getting to Yes and Selling in Charge, are books that people, um, like the only one, the one on the left, a few people recommended it to me. The one on the right is one that I found like while like Googling, well, actually searching on Amazon, I guess. Um, um, and I thought both of, both of them are pretty interesting. The, the one on the left is about negotiation in general. The one on the right is about either managing uh, down or up. Um, and the book actually, you can flip it. Um, and so if you actually have to read it from both ways. Uh, um, you can't see it on over there. Yeah, so why would you, would you want to invest some time in, in any of this? Well, um, you might say like, well, I don't really want to deal with politics. But the challenge is when there, whenever there's people, there's going to be politics. And so uh, I found this cartoon on the web. Um, I'll show several different cartoons. Doesn't mean that I necessarily agree with everything that these cartoons are saying. But this cartoon shows like there's the x-axis where you're either politically unaware or aware and then whether you're playing a game or not. Um, so if you assume that there's no politics and you're not trying to game anything, here the discussion says you would be an, an inept um, um, uh, But like there's also the innocent where you're, uh, oh, sorry, the, the y-axis was the politically unaware. Um, yeah, so the y-axis you're like politically unaware, um, but on the left side you're game playing, on the right you're acting with integrity. Uh, yeah, that makes more sense. <laughs> so on the right, like bottom right, that's maybe a lot of uh, people, maybe a lot of you, um, where uh, you're just you know basically innocent, um, and uh, you could um, you know try to be wise. I guess that's maybe the better one, but also maybe clever if you want to. Um, and so if we look at definitions of politics, there's a, there's a lot of them. Um, on Wikipedia, I see like here, like um, politics also involves negotiation. Uh, um, so um, if you think about it like more abstractly, whenever there's people, there's politics. And whenever there's politics, there's negotiation. That's why like you will be interested in like learning how to negotiate better. Um, and so the idea is like about reading these books or asking other people for advice is you don't have to come up with everything from scratch. You can always like um, you know, see what, what other people are doing and make it yours, right? There's a lot of diversity in like wheels, for example. And so I don't know, maybe I prefer this one, maybe you prefer that one, et cetera. But they all work, right? Um, um, and so if you look for, you try to Google like about office politics, one, this cartoon shows up, um, like if you Google image, um, if you Google search for images about office politics. And so this one is like about like 12 different types of people um, at work that um, you might be interested in avoiding. Um, so like the minister of credit is someone that like steals all the credit, for example. Um, there might be a person of manipulation, control, etc. cetera. Um, um, so um, even if you're trying not to play in a, you know, even if you're trying to be politically unaware, there might be other people surrounding you that might be following some of these archetypes um, or a combination of them. Um, and so, Office politics is quite a big thing. Maybe there's even like a wiki how how to survive office politics. But one of the things they say here is like, you know, um, if your coworkers need your help, 
um, the likely and they'll be unlikely to undermine you at work um, because you'll be like a resource for them. Um, and they talk about like, well, you want to like freely share your knowledge and skills with anyone who needs it. And I, when I read this, I was like, oh, this reminds me of like the data science kind of sessions that we're doing, right? Where like anyone that wants help at Lieber uh, or even other colleagues can come and ask us for help, right? Um, um, so, I mean, I'm, in general, I like sharing what I know, um, although sometimes within the time limits that I have, right? Um, right. Um, and so, yeah, um, here, like I took a screenshot from the data science guidance session page we have. I said, well, yeah, we'll try our best to help you um, guide as much as we can, right? Within the time limits that we have available. Um, so I think we're doing that um, pretty well. Like, it's not like I saw the survive office politics before coming up with the data science guidance sessions, right? But sometimes it's like nice to, to see some positive reinforcement, right? When you Google how to, what people recommend. And so this getting to yes book, um, there's a few different editions. Um, I think this one is the third, I forget. Um, um, so this book has been around for quite a while. Uh, they've dated it a few different times. The editor at some point now became an co-author, um, which I thought that was a pretty interesting story. And um, we have a lot of examples about like if you're a tenant negotiating with your landlord, uh, like things like that, um, um, or uh, examples from negotiation, negotiations between countries. Um, you know, things are pretty hard to resolve. Um, but overall, they talk about their method, which has four steps. They say, like, try to separate the people from the problem. I right? say, so in a way, this is like make things less personal, right? Um, um, then once you've done that, um, focus on like what are the interests of everyone in, in, except, yeah, focus on what the, their interests are, not on what they're saying, like this is my position, right? Um, um, and so if you do that, you'll realize like, oh, well, maybe this person is um, like, let's say it's a authorship negotiation, right? about like what position to be in the paper. Maybe they're not as interested in like being the second author, let's say. Maybe they're more interested in like um, showing that they can advance their career, right? Um, that they have um, supporting information for advancing their career. Um, so once you notice what are their positions uh, instead of, the, uh, sorry, their interests instead of their positions, then you can try to brainstorm either by yourself or like, with the other party on other options that there could that there could exist, where uh, maybe both of you end up winning in some way, right, or gaining something. Um, so I thought this was a pretty uh, like interesting um, take um, because, like for example, one of the one of the examples they give is like you're trying to buy something, right? Like the only thing you have there is your position about like I'm willing to pay X amount. And the other person is like willing to sell you something for a Y amount, right? And you're just like moving everything on one one axis. But you try to invent other options, maybe there. Um, maybe both of you can gain something. Um, I don't remember a full example right now. Um, um, and then once you've done that, this is. Although in theory, I think this is a great point. I find this to be really challenging in practice, which is to use a, objective criteria to determine um, um, like actually which of the options is best, right? Um, the problem with that is like, um, for example, we're talking about like a salary negotiation. There could be different types of objective criteria. Maybe one of them will benefit one, one side, the other one will benefit the other one. Um, so this, I think, gets quite challenging in practice. Um, um, and so we go more into negotiation, right? uh, like on different Wikipedia pages about politics. You can see like um, 
like one person defined here politics as like um, uh, co comprises all activities of cooperation, negotiation, and conflict within and between societies. Um, um, if we go to the prehistoric area type of thing, um, and in um, politics, politics emerged because there was like a resource and status competition too. And so I feel like, oh, this, this still exists, right? There, there are always limited resources um, um, and like uh, multiple people can be aiming for those limited resources. Um, so this image here on about negotiation says like, it actually involves a lot of different pieces. Um, you might have a, some tactics about it, but also you need to communicate quite a bit um, and collaborate. Uh, so uh, this is a part of our like, ideally um, you want to come out, out of a negotiation being like maybe feeling well with each other, with the two sides, instead of like feeling like you fought to the, to the death type of thing. Um, and so I feel like there's always like different negotiations we might be having. So for example, maybe if you're in my team, you might be negotiating with me or with your uh, manager about like what projects to focus on, um, because maybe we have different goals, um, um, like maybe um, your promotion um, or like let's even among collaborators, right? Like for example, what story to tell in a different in a particular paper, right? What is the uh, the focus of the paper that you want to highlight? Um, that could also involve sometimes a bit of a, a negotiation, right? Um, and um, uh, you want to be thinking about this because um, I mean we have our career growth sessions on the team, as recommended by the How to Be a Modern Scientist book by Jeff Leake. Um, and so that's one of the things I, I try to talk with each of you, which is like, let's try to uh, plan for the future. And like, maybe part of that is like learning actually some negotiation skills. Um, 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 and it takes time to, to learn them um, and to practice them. So um, like, if you need them at that point, trying to learn them might be very stressful or like it might be time restricted. Um, so this might be one of those things that like might be best to learn slowly during the year before you actually need them at some point. Um, and so my maturation or like growing uh, takes time. I found this really funny. Like you can go to this, uh, this website, search for any word and they'll make a little meme. <laughs> about like all the other um, related words or synonyms, um, right? So uh, like growing, I guess uh, developing, um, aging, becoming an adult or becoming full grown, all of this, you can see that's related to time also, right? Um, um, so there's not like a magic pill type of thing that will uh, suddenly make you like an expert at negotiation. Um, and uh, from my own point of view, I guess um, at different times I've had to learn it um, um, with a small amount of time. Um, and I think in hindsight, I could have done a better job in different negotiations I've had over the years. Um, uh, but um, uh, I've also been willing to negotiate, even though sometimes that can be a bit uh, uh, stressful. Uh, so one of the things about this getting to yes book that I put in practice is we have um, a list of um, things you want to think about for your brainstorming session where you're trying to think about uh, more options to expand your universe. Um, and um, I use these screenshots of the book here for a particular retreat we had. Um, where you want to define what's the purpose of that meeting, choose a few participants. Um, you don't want to meet where you normally meet to change that environment. Um, uh, have someone that will be willing to take notes. Um, try to, uh, they talk here about like try to position people 
in a way that they're facing against the problem against uh, instead of facing each other. Um, uh, so it becomes more of like overall united type of thing um, solving this. But um, one of the more important ones here is like like having a no criticism rule, such that like people are not um, uh, self censoring when they're sharing their ideas. Um, uh, and it go, goes on and on a bit. Um, um, uh, and I, I've done, I've, I've been part of several brainstorming like retreats in the past, um, where like I saw some of these different things being applied. Uh, but now seeing them like all together, like uh, on a step by step description, I thought that was pretty interesting um, and useful. And so one example from the past was like um, the R Open Sci on conference 2018, where people shared a lot of ideas and discussed them on, on GitHub. You can see here there's a lot, there's there were 66 issues with like some of them having like, for example, this one had like 35 uh, comments back and forth. Um, um, so I thought that was like a pretty um, neat way of doing it. Um, and also at the same time here, you record like your ideas, right? Um, uh, but there's also like a diversity uh, options for what type of question you could be asking. Um, so they, they talk about like, the first thing you wanna do is like define what is the problem. Um, so there's different questions you can ask about that. Then once you have defined the problem, you want to analyze it and be like, okay, why are we having this problem? Um, but then you can have like different approaches to trying to solve that problem. And then um, once you decide on like the different approaches, you can have questions about like, how will I exactly do it, right? Like implementing it, doing the logistics about it, and it becomes a, um, a cycle, right? So, uh, um, uh, and so I recently, we had a deconvolution retreat where we, um, try to copy a bit of, of those ideas from um, our student cup. This screenshot is early on. Later we had, a, I think at least over 20 issues, we had quite a bit of discussion. Um, but there were also like a variety of questions. Some of them were like more um, like the type of question when you ask when you're looking at the forest. Some of them were more like specifically looking at, at a particular like, like tree, for example, right? Um, uh, Oh, so I thought, I mean, there's a lot of other pieces to this getting to years book. But that's like, if you want like a, a brief overview of what that book provides, um, that would be it. Um, and then the solidly in charge book, um, uh, I first read the managing down, I think, before reading, reading the managing up portion of the book. Um, um, I would say this book is fairly easy to read, um, maybe easier than the negotiation book. Um, and uh, um, I mean, it's the best, um, sorry. Uh, I, guess, I guess it's pretty, a pretty popular book. Um, um, although like a lot of the examples here like focus on the experience of the author um, herself. Um, and so maybe they're a bit less relatable at times. But in any case, I felt like well, there was a lot of interesting material in this book. Um, one of the things he highlights is that coordinating and communication are not easy. Um, I found this little cartoon, right? Which is like someone is asking, like a manager is asking, like we need a risk analysis and like the risk analysis is basically like the boss is not great. <laughs> All right. Um, uh, yeah, so uh, um, both sides need to spend time like trying to communicate properly. Um, like both sides here, like as the manager and the um, employee, but also uh, like across teams, et cetera. Right. Um, and so <clears throat> you might not be thinking about this, but at some point you will probably uh, manage others as you grow. Um, so maybe right now you're not thinking of how do I manage someone? 
what are the things I need to do when I manage someone. Uh, but if you think about it, here this cartoon tries to um, organize those ideas on the left, um, where like there's a lot of questions and you don't know how to start, where to start, where like this, the, the, a lot of those questions are maybe more organized over here on the right, where there's like a development plan for getting those skills for managing, right? Um, practicing, learning, um, um, uh, um, and like getting feedback from others, et cetera. Um, um, and so, I mean, the book, the title of it is like selling in charge, right? Which is like for people that, uh, yeah, like they were not expecting to be a manager and then suddenly they are, right? Um, um, in a way that, uh, that kind of happened to me, right? When Andrew left, um, Andrew Jaffe left, uh, but um, um, for you, this can also happen where like, let's say a student joins the lab and like I ask you to like, hey, can you train, help train this person, right? Maybe you're not expecting to, to then, to be supervising a student, right? Um, and um, there may be common mistakes that you might make, right? Um, um, and a lot of it is, can be related to like assumptions, um, assuming that the student will do whatever you have in your mind, um, but maybe not, um, it's like setting clear expectations, communicating with them, right? Um, um, and so, yeah. um, maybe it is more for the discussion, but like at some point, like I need, I had to leave uh, uh, for a while and actually, the, the selling in charge book had just arrived. Uh, so I gave a copy to Nick and one to Luis. And then I was like, hey, I'm, I'll be out for a while. <laughs> right? So maybe they can tell us a bit more about you know, selling being in charge. Um, in my case, um, like in my uh, career, I, I didn't, I was conscious that like in the academic training, you don't get trained to be a manager. So one of the things that, um, uh, was attractive to me after finishing my undergrad uh, of joining this company called Winter Genomics was that um, I actually had the opportunity to be in charge of five people to hire them and manage them. And so I definitely made like several mistakes um, then, but I knew it was like an opportunity to learn uh, because later on, if I had a lab or a team, um, um, I would need uh, some of those skills. Um, so this is a screenshot from like one of my blog posts where I talk about like, about that little piece, uh, like what I did in the past. Um, and so one of the things that is, becomes really challenging when you become a manager is learning how to delegate. Um, and so this cartoon over here has like 11 points. Uh, how, what are the things you need to do when you're delegating? Um, well, in my in the past at Winter Genomics, what I did was we had a project that was due to a specific date, and um, someone very capable um, was in charge of it. Um, and every once in a while, we had like meetings, and like the employee would say like, "Oh, things are going well," but then three days before it was due, um, like things were not going well. And then I was like, "Well, you know, you said they were going well. Now you need to fix them." Um, and then someone else like was like, Leo, that's you know not the best thing to do uh, as a manager. You try to go and, and try to fix the things with them, right? Because um, um, like uh, like both of you are part of the company, right? Um, so that's what I ended up doing. Um, 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 and um, um, it, I realized it was a bit of a mistake not having like these checkpoints and trying to like uh, see more details about how it was uh, it was uh, progressing instead of just being like oh yeah sure you're saying it's all okay that's that's good right um, so there was a bit of like not ideal communication between me and my employee at that point um, and I did learn from that um, um, some people will be like, well, well why do you want to delegate? 
there's like um, uh, diff different benefits of doing so. Um, uh, like for the manager, like that might be lead to less stress or having to work a bit less. For the employee, it's like an opportunity to learn in confidence. For the overall organization, is um, it can be more productive. Um, but it is always a challenge because like sometimes it, would, it could be like, well, maybe it takes me more time to teach someone how to do something than for me to do it, right? Uh, like you might be thinking about this um, a few different times. And so like the part about learning for the employee and getting confidence, this pays back if, um, if that employee stays with you for, for a while, right? Or the student or, or whoever. Um, and then they have an opportunity to keep growing. Um, um, so I would say like, it can get, it can get tricky to determine plan to delegate. Um, right now I have a situation where I maybe it would have been best if I had delegated it, but I, um, I want to still be able to code a bit. So there, there I'm maybe being a bit more selfish and like, I want to, um, still have stuff to code myself here and there. Um, but there's overall like a lot of barriers to delegation, like the lack of trust is a big one or like, um, or control where you like, if you delegate something, that person is gonna do it in a different way from the way you would have done it. Um, and that's very natural. Um, um, uh, uh, but like, this is also something I've been trying to do since I took over from Andrew, which is like try to train um, um, everyone in the team and try to set some standards such that like, um, we can, uh, all of us can do more things, um, um, but we can also do them in a way that like others, other people can understand them, right? Um, then about managing up, uh, is a bit, I guess, a bit funny, which is like they say, like managing up is bad, but actually bad here is the acronym for these three words. Um, and so, uh, they are you here like, like this, there's this idea that when you have to manage out, that means that your um, supervisor or boss is uh, a pretty bad person, um, which may might be the case, but I think like, um, even if you have a great manager, you can still try to manage up. Um, um, because a lot of uh, a lot of about managing up is also trying to trying to communicate to uh, whoever is managing you um, what you think is important, what you think people we should be doing, um, uh, and that can be quite useful because. Um, um, like for example, I, I like, I value quite a bit like getting feedback and ideas from others, right? Um, uh, getting that initiative from others. Um, and I think like that is a very enriching experience. Um, so, but if you keep working knowing that like this is not the right direction of where we should be going and you keep doing that for a while, like um, uh, that could like, maybe have a negative effect for everyone involved, right? Because uh, uh, you end up doing something that you know is maybe not the best thing to do. Um, and your supervisor might not notice ever or might notice like a long time from now, right? They're like, oh, actually there was a different way of doing things, right? Um, um, so again, communication shows up as one of the skills, right? That you need uh, for managing up. It has shown up as important as being important for negotiation, as being important for managing down. Um, 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 but like part of it is also like learning how to communicate appropriately with your manager, right? Um, so like learning like how to present um, your ideas. So I don't know. Let's say like. Uh, uh, 
maybe someone whenever you say an idea they're like oh well we don't have any data supporting this like you know nih <laughs> right but then whenever you present an idea to that manager you're like oh well here i have some preliminary data showing that you know this could this, this could work right um uh so maybe that's the way that that manager likes to uh, receive information right maybe other managers just like to get the idea first before so they can be involved in like deciding where to spend the time generating that preliminary data, right? Um, so there's maybe different ways here. Um, um, so again, you don't have to reinvent the wheel, um, and, but you also have, don't have to use exactly the same wheel, right? You can always adapt it, make it yours. Um, um, and one of the things I like also about the Southern Charge Book, it has some legal tables like this one, where um, you can basically like self-evaluate yourself and be like, oh, what are maybe some mistakes that I'm doing? Um, so this table here is like from managing the managing down portion of the book. Um, and it asks, like, for example, when you're talking with some with a, uh, someone you're managing, um, do you end up doing most of the talking, right? If you do that, like, that could maybe be a problem where you're not actually giving an opportunity for the person you're managing to give you some feedback, right? Um, uh, uh, and there's a few other questions here, right? Um, cool. So just to end, like um, Larissa Soto here, you can see was one of the people that recommended me this getting to yes book in 2020. Um, and then I forgot I had asked this question and I asked it again in 2021. <laughs> Um, and so I was like, oh, I had like, uh, when I uh, Google search, um, managing up, this is how I found that, well, Amazon search, that's how I ended up finding something in charge book. Uh, I was like, hey, do people have any recommendations? And so um, the Getting to Yes book, another friend of mine read it um, as they were negotiating their um, uh, faculty appointment. Uh, but, uh, didn't have time to fully read it and it was a bit of a stressful experience right um, um, uh, so again here like i would recommend maybe reading some of these books when there's less of less of a uh, stressful situation that like is maybe uh, forcing you to to think about these things right um so you, you know how we have the art Studs club for the idea to spend some of our official work time like learning and uh, learning new things um, or even learning all, uh, older things but maybe things that we didn't know or revisiting them you can also think that uh, i mean from my point of view i think uh, uh, spending a bit of official work hours like reading some of these books could be useful too right it doesn't have to be necessarily these two books it could be another one right uh, maybe someone else delivers some of these ideas are messages in a different, in a way that is more appropriate for you um, or more relatable to you. Cool. So that, with that, I'll end the presentation.